Hello there, and welcome to another Stompy 51 miniature adventure. Who doesn't love the nightmarish slight comedy of proper old school, old hammer, 1980s, early 90s orcs? And I have, over the years, been very slowly picking up by way of sale or swap various old hammer orcs, largely by Kev Adams, and I thought the time has come to share what I've got rather than just continuing to leave them in the garage because it's a long time till they're likely to be used, especially as it is taking me weeks and weeks to slowly wade through my 50 uh, or so Team Yankee Republican Guard Iraqi World War Three tanks. So first, let's look at the Renegade Miniatures ones. Which sad, I mean, Renegade Miniatures was a lovely little company. It existed for a long time, and then it stopped existing. No idea why. And so here's quite a chunky orc. And the person I swapped it with seems to have done a little bit of green stuffing. What the need was for adding a bit of chainmail there, I don't know. I mean, sticking that in at the end. I mean, it's creative, as any good-natured orc would be. The little drummer boy, boom, boom, boom. Very uh, mid-medieval kind of look. Slightly Byzantine, Eastern look. I don't know what the name of that kind of armor is. That kind of tiered little bits of metal. Comments below if you do know. And of course, I don't know what it's called, that kind of morning star mounted on a club for extra clubbiness. And you can see what they, they obviously did in those days. They would, oh, hang on, this is the same miniature. No, it's not. The helmets are slightly different, but you can see what the end faces. You can see what they would do in those days. They would use the same body and then just use it as a kind of dolly for their own kind of conversions and then cast more of that ilk. He's completely different and I would say one of the best. He looks like a kind of town guard, maybe hanging at the back and he is definitely smaller. Will that stop me putting them in the same unit? I mean, no, I'm a lot smaller than many people. At work, in the photos, I always look like I've been miniaturized. Now the question for the forum, out there is. So this is it. So I don't have too many extra shields floating around. These are from some Avatars of War 3 printed, and they didn't come out fantastically at the back, but you know, no one would notice at the front. And that is a kind of old school look, but equally, it just doesn't seem quite right. So I swapped with someone on the Lead Adventure forum for their bag of shields, and the shields must be some kind of 3000 BC North European ancient shields. Possibly, my guess would be, because I'm such a geek, I can identify these things. It might be from War Games Foundry, who do have such a range um, and they would fit so I could give him that shield and I think it looks just about fine but the thing is do he would be like the only dude in the unit with the shield but then again these aren't ever going to be in kind of mass units I suspect because I have vast numbers of plastic orcs for mass battles these would be in some kind of game like 70 he's got a 70 fantasy game if i ever played that i think these look like the old school orcs that they are imitating there's vanguard um which no one seems to like and my friendly local gaming store but i think it's all right which is the mantic kind of small scale fantasy skirmish game but you know i don't see a problem with it does he need a shield he doesn't look quite good with that shield 
Well, he doesn't quite look the same as the other guys. I mean, he's supposed to be the same unit as this guy. Oh, well. Different people look different. Different orcs look different. Another big two-handed chomper kind of guy. Look at him, keeping everyone in the game with the face of a squig. I mean, would people paint that just gold as a kind of piece of orky art, or do they reckon they've actually carved off the actual face of a squig? In which case, how do they get the tongue to stick out? Do we want to get into all of that? Probably not. And what's that? Some kind of like ale jug, which is obviously nicked from some kind of Dwarven hold. But, you know, how do these guys have the sophistication to prepare these kinds of suits of armour and brew ale? Oh, do we need to look into that? This armour looks quite funky and he looks quite scary. But you see, again, if the other guys have shields, where would his shield be? I don't know, where would his shield be? We wouldn't want to mangle that up by sticking that there and then how would it be held on he hasn't got a strap the shield would go there does that look quite right not really no he definitely doesn't need a shield now depending on how you look at it what the person i swapped this with has done here is either a piece of genius or a calumny. So it's a calumny if you think these miniatures are basically sacred, given that renegade miniatures doesn't exist anymore and no one has signaled they're gonna cast these. So he's removed, must have been the two-handed weapon, and slotted in a spear, which if I had to guess is from the old Games Workshop skeleton sprue, but I don't know. But the way he slotted it in is absolutely perfect. Look at that. Look at that. So I think he gets an award rather than our opprobrium for desecrating these beautiful metal sculpts. Grrr, I told you. <laughs> Look at these two that he did. Similar. Is that the same? Yeah, that is the same miniature. Hmm? Hmm? Are we looking in the mirror? Yeah, we are. Oh, well. Kill. So that's the Renegade miniatures. All 12 of them. But like I say, will I ever use them in a unit? Not really. I mean, they weigh a lot. And these are, of course, 25 mil bases. So then I've got a few of these big guns, I guess they're called, from Eorbis, whatever they're called, the Black Tree Designs, and before that, Harlequin Miniatures, I think they were. I mean, do have a look around before you buy anything from them at the various feedback forums on the Lid Adventure Forum. They do have some fantastic miniatures, but ordering can be a bit hit and miss, shall we just say. So in terms of shields, I mean that guy needs a shield and that one kind of works. And I don't know what kind of shield this originally came with because I, mean, I did buy these directly from Black Tree Design but I've lost the shield but it must have been a high square shield or like a kind of, you know, medieval one. But I think no one's really going to notice if I stick this on the front. The only question is, I mean, it does look quite wrong from the back. But then again, who's going to be looking at it from the back? Maybe I'll go and look for another shield. But then again, because it, it did have a kind of, and you still can see it, some kind of um, peg we just stick the shield onto. Oh well. Hashtag first world problems. 
So he looks angry. And he looks sufficiently angry with his little shield. And he'll ah, so he's also got that peg. And how does the shield look on him? Ah, just fine. I mean, it's a humongous sword. And they're cast quite nicely. And again, very old school. But are they compatible with the other ones? I mean, these are different sized creatures. So let's get rid of that. Yeah, they're about the same height, just bigger proportions. Now, why would you give your big guns long range weaponry if you want them up close and getting violently personal? But they do look good. Oh, wait, there's a third one. Oops, the third one. I knew there were three. The rule of three. And yeah, and they are, well, supposed to be big guns and they're bigger proportions, but they about the same height. So maybe we don't need to say that they're big ones, albeit I think he is bigger than the standard fare in the renegade range. So he might have been a big gun in the renegade range. So just mixing this all up together, you can see that this is bigger than that. But again, you know, you wouldn't expect them all to be the same height. And if you're playing a fantasy skirmish game, well, there'll be scope for people of different talents. Now, part of me does regret not going with the Impact Miniatures uh, Kickstarter a few years back because they brought back all these amazing Kev Adams Heartbreaker Miniatures sculpts, um, not in metal, in some kind of spin cast resin, which, frankly, some things like that, from my experience of the Goblins, which I did go with, probably are too brittle, but the rest of it would be fine. The only thing is, at the time, I wasn't that interested in orcs. Um, and now I just think, you know, the exchange rate and the costs and the taxes just aren't worth it. But I do have one from that Heartbreaker range. Which I think is now sold. Is by Reaper Miniatures Europe, Reaper Miniatures UK. And he is pretty runty. He will be known as runty. Now, there's anything wrong with being small. I mean, that's probably me. And bow would probably be my weapon of choice rather than, you know, that, because that would involve running up to the enemy. Whereas that would involve standing back, taking cunning pot shots and not getting your head bashed in. And then, and I wish I did have more of these, but I'm a bit reticent about all the postage and tax costs. But Kev Adams seems to have done a lot of work for the Greenskin Wars range by that Spanish company. Which would be Nightmare Games. Look at these. Don't do it. Don't do it. Think of... Think of the postage and taxes and appalling exchange rate. The only thing is, I think it must be sensible to make an arrangement with someone in the UK to produce these under license and sell them only within the UK because I'm sure their sales would be a lot higher. You know, our nation may not have achieved great things in the last decade, except national stagnation, but, you know, we are still a wargaming heavyweight. So they, they are, I mean, these are quite chunky. I mean, they are much bigger proportioned than the Renegade ones. And are they even the same height? Just about. But they are even bigger proportioned. 
or are they then the these big ones from black tree design no they're there that it all fits in perfectly and actually look at that how he does strappy footwear hasn't changed either over a very very long time i mean why would it it's not exactly the focus of the miniature And then we move on to some old hammer, but I'm not sure who cast, who, who, who sculpted these. Is it, is it Brian Nelson? I'm not really sure. And so these two, again, clearly based on the same dolly with different weapons. Great fun though. And they are a lot smaller and very different in style. But I don't think I'll get I'll get rid of them. I think every skirmish game involves kind of runty orcs. And they will be runts. Along with runty McGrunt over here. And how do they look with the shield? And don't worry, it's not the same shield that will be shared around. I do have a vast bag of said shield, and they look just perfect and still pretty terrifying and I've got the leader dude how explain away him being a bit runty I don't know well he isn't runty anyway it's more about the psychology of what's in the mind and indeed the helmet <laughs> And I'm not sure about that banner. I'm not sure if I need it. I mean, they did a very good sculpting job. Must be that part of the top. No, hang on. I have no idea. Because this is how they did this. Because this is from the Orc Plastic Sprue. Games Workshop Plastic Sprue. I have no idea how they got it into their hand and made it look seamless with that. Unless it's in there and pinned at that point. Probably. Not very well painted to be cheeky, and I'm not really minded to strip it. I may swap it with someone who is minded to strip it, and then oh, things that don't quite match but may be slotted anyway. This is some kind of orc from Brothers Unite. I'm not sure what that is. The person who swapped this with me told me was from Brothers Unite. And he looks a bit too modern. Mm, but the faces don't look too different. Certainly once they're painted. I mean, the style of armor is very different because these are, because Kev Adams' armor style does make them look like kind of 11th century, 12th century Mongols. The Mongol horde, the golden horde. But this guy looks pretty Lord of the Rings, which might actually suggest his future. Not that I mind it anytime soon, but at the back of my mind is the idea of buying even more miniatures and um, playing Lord of the Rings with an orc army based on the Oathmark orcs. And he does look like a giant version of one of those, making him an obvious boss. And then this guy has a little bit of a history. I originally bought him back in the day when I played loads of Blood Bowl and I didn't put this fist on. I got one of those kind of orc basher fists, sorry, one of those uh, ogre basher fists that you get, that you, yeah, that you still get within the ogre sprues for the Games Workshop ogres and made him, and then did a bit of green stuff around the front and uh, made him, well, he was going to be a, a black orc, uh, character but he always looked too military and thank heavens I never got rid of this shield and this sword and when I realized that the reality was I was more up for playing um skirmish games and I was playing Blood Bowl I found the sword 
and I got it back. And then perhaps foolishly, I've spray painted him in army painter silver or metal, whatever it's called, because he's largely metal. I mean, he's largely wearing armor, but I'm not sure what painting that cloak red will look like on a silver undercoat or painting that fur some kind of black. But he is a humongous guy and is supposed to come on a 25 mil base on which he does kind of fit. He does kind of fit. And I think he borderline, once he's painted, will look like he's of the same ilk as these guys. I mean, some beautiful runic lettering on that sword, though that will be the least of your worries when it clunks you on the head. And will I put kind of blood for the blood god all the way along there for extra childishness and puerility? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. But anyway, first I'd need to get some people interested in some kind of game that uses these. So it may be some years, which is why I've made this video, because I thought, why wait all that time? Why not share all of this with the wider community? And I think we'll leave it there for today. On the subject of which, apropos of nothing, I was in the Science Museum in London, and I saw amidst the very boring range of like toasters uh, and other apparatus and stuff from the 50s, there was this beautiful model, giant model of a Churchill tank. Anyway, thanks for watching to the end. Please do subscribe and like and comment. Not only does it kind of enable other people to see what's going on on my little channel, because the algorithm prefers videos with these things, but it's fun for me to kind of see what people think and write back and we have a bit of a discussion about the geekiness, for example, here of 1990s Kev Adams sculpts. Have a great day or evening, wherever you are. And I hope to see you again soon.